Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 649. This one's going to be kind of be a mo movie review. So the second one I've done, second time I've done this. Um, talking about Captain Marvel and about feminine empowerment and feminine leadership. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know why I do this, <laughs> and who I am, and that sort of stuff, and then we'll get to it. Um, and there'll be no spoilers, at least of the plan anyway. So first of all, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I do that, and also why these talks started over two years ago, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And so I do these talks every day on subjects around relationships, romance, feminine empowerment, women being respected, and that sort of thing. And so I fig <coughs> excuse me. I figured that if I went, if I, as I saw Captain Marvel today, I thought I'd just share about it with the perspective and the lens from this area. So this is episode number 649, so almost at 650, that'll be tomorrow. And I do, by the way, I do these talks every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my Facebook personal page first, and then they go to my YouTube channel. So if you're watching there, it started here, if that makes sense. <laughs> so. Captain Marvel. Now, just to start off things, I am a I am a Marvel fan. I do love the the MCU, so I enjoy the movies. Um, even when they're not the best movies, they're still very entertaining. And, and Captain Marvel in particular was a very fun movie. And because I saw it today, it's very much in my mind. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I thought I was over that. I guess it's not gone yet. But I want to speak to some components of the movie that I think are relevant, particularly in today's world. I did some talks um, on the weekend about um, International Women's Day and how we're still missing the mark in terms of respect for women. Um, and I'm on a mission to speak more about that. So this is a perfect segue or a perfect intersection, better way of putting it. So Captain Marvel, um, if you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. I think it's a very fun movie. Um, I will say, remember to stay for the credits because there's gonna be two posts um, one mid-credit and one post-credit scenes that you probably want to catch just to be filled in for the next movie because you know they do that, they plant the seeds. Um, there were some surprises in the movie and lots of fun stuff and to be honest Carol Danvers, the character Carol Danvers was a very kind of a well filled out character um, partly because she had to regain memory and I've got to be careful I don't want to give away the plot <laughs> but it's tempting um, but the truth is that her character and then her, um, I won't say partner in crime, but her co- the, basically there were three main female leads in the movie. In, and I don't mean that in terms of the titles of actors, I mean characters in the movie. There was Carol Danvers, uh, Captain Marvel, her um, friend and, best, sorry, best friend and fellow pilot, um, whose name will come back to me in a second, that was who, whose call sign was Photon, and actually four in a way because her daughter played, even though her daughter was like nine years old, was very much in it as well. But also the Annette Benning character, who I'm not going to tell you anything about because I keep don't give any spoilers. But she turned out to be quite an amazingly deep character too, and the three of them together, in a lot of ways, were the main leaders of the movie. So this was a feminine-led movie energetically. The male characters in it were more. I'm just scanning through. Some antagonistic, but very much subordinate roles to the women. So that energetic alone was a powerful and refreshing experience in the movie. The second part also was watching the women, because one thing that happened for, and again, I'm gonna be careful not doing any spoilers, but there was a line in the movie, which I think is in the previews too, so you may have heard it already, that Carol Danvers says about, about being human, and I think in a lot of ways about being a woman, because she owned it very beautifully, was saying about one thing about us is when we fall down, we get back up again. And that was a telling and humbling, but also powerful reminder about the power of our will as human beings, but also the power of women to remember they're much more powerful than they're perhaps been perceived as. So that's the second, that was the second part. Another part of the movie that I really liked, and this is just coming through as it comes through, was the fact that the women were in collaboration. As I said, there was Carol Danvers and her best friend who were fellow pilots, but there wasn't this thing about one-upmanship, one, one who was better than the other one. It was more about supporting each other, encouraging each other, and, and inspiring each other, which for me is one of the 
most um, forgotten qualities of feminine leadership is that feminine leadership is not like male leadership. Male leadership is more like one, solo in charge running ahead. Female leadership, feminine leadership, as it was portrayed in the movie for me, was helping each other out, collaborating, cooperating, being able to stand in front, but also be a place where you encourage each other. And yes, it was kind of cute in the sense the way that she was talking to the daughter, who in, and, and she's like the auntie, even though they're not related by blood. But it was a sense of encouragement, support, and collaboration that was throughout the movie between the women. And that was a powerful telling moment for me about how women can do more of that in the world and not fight each other, but to compete with each other, uh, not to compete with each other, which is what a lot of women have been trained to do by our culture. Because our culture being very patriarch patriarchal is not about collaboration or, co or cooperation. It's about competition. But the model taught in this movie, and again, I'm, be and, and I'm talking about a Marvel movie, you know, it's a comic book made into a movie. But some of the things that were in the movie were very telling. Um, and that was one of the things for me was about how the women worked together most of the time. Some of the women didn't, let's be clear about that. I'm just reflecting on, the, on parts of the movie. One thing I'll say, just the total sideline or sidebar um, is, the, is the opening credit, um, which was a tribute to uh, Stan Lee, was beautiful. Um, when you watch the movie from the beginning, and this is not a spoiler, but it's just something to look for, is the opening credits where they have the Marvel um, scene flicker through the Marvel logo studios that comes up. Usually it's the different superhero characters, and has been for the last several, several movies. But this movie, it's all clips of Stan Lee interacting, both in the movies as his um, insert. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Evie. Exactly. Stan's opening made you tear up. It, did, it almost made me tear up, too. It's such a deep like respect for him. Because even some of the, the, the quick scenes that scanned across the, the, the titles that went up were of him on um, backstage, like with the, with the actors off screen. And that was just really humbling and really beautiful to show the tribute and the, and the respect for him as, as, a, as, well, as the man who created basically Marvel. And so that was a beautiful piece. So that's a total sidebar, nothing to do with this topic, but it's about the movie in a way. So the movie itself, again, it was powerful. I mean, for me, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so a few of us, a few of us, including myself, did did when I went today. It was an, it was an afternoon show, so it was a small turnout. But a couple of us were like, "Yay!" <laughs> In true to that, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad you did that. People did when you went too. Um, one piece about the movie that I personally loved was about all the '90s flashback stuff with the music, the props, the environments. You know, with Radio Shack and Blockbuster and all these different things, it, and, and it was just it was fun. And some of the cars in it, actually, I remember. There were cars that I, I wanted. Some of the American cars were all fun too. Yeah, yeah. The, the gold music, the Nirvana. It's funny because um, the um, it was it was um, just a girl, Gwen, Gwen Stefani, no doubt. That was that was like that 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 particular song was perfectly timed in the movie. That's what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> that was that was cute too. But yeah, there was such good music in the movie. It was fun to watch in so many ways. And it's funny, the only thing that triggered me in the movie, because I, I thought, and it may be in my imagination, I thought there wasn't at this time, was the fact that it was the metro trains that I thought, I didn't know they were running in the 90s. Maybe I just need to go back and look at my history, so I totally missed that point. Anyway, it's a whole scene with the, the uh, metro train. Um, and it was LA, wasn't it? <laughs> it's funny, I'm looking back and going, was there, was there anything overt in the movie that showed what town it was in? Hmm. Anyway, sorry, I digress. You agree, you agree, yeah, Gwen Stefani, yes. Yes, I agree with that too. So anyway, so the bottom line for me, just to make this point clear again, because <laughs> this is it's supposed to be a teaching moment in a way, even though I'm, going, even though I'm um, gleeful about the movie, was this sense of collaboration and cooperation between the women. Because these three different characters that were intersecting in the movie in one way but we're unrelated in another way, and again, I'm not trying to give anything away, so no spoilers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Evie, you know LA better than I do. They, they edited the trains during the 84 Olympics. Ah, I must have missed that. I guess the thing is, because they opened up the expo line, which is near where I live, um, only about two years ago. Two, yeah, about two years ago. So the rest of the train line, I'd, been, I'd not even thought about it because it was never close to us, so I just wasn't aware of it. So yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, so again, this teaching point, 
that even though the movie was set in the 90s, there was such an awakened place the women were coming from and being in their level of authority. And even though they're all very different people, particularly as, as Captain Marvel had all these superpowers at the point of the movie, um, yeah, well, I don't remember which trains were. I'll, I'll look online just out of curiosity, look on Wikipedia or something just to look it up, just because I'm now curious about that. Um, but to bring it back to the, end, the topic at hand, <laughs> there are some twists in the movie, by the way, so definitely watch the movie because there was, it wasn't just a straightforward story, which I liked about it. It had a little bit of nuance and some, had a lot of fun in it too. There was so, so many winks in the movie too. Um, you passed the, the, bed shell, the bed shell test with flying cars? What's the bed shell test? Remind me, I blanked on that. So yeah, so <laughs> Evie, if you can rem remind me what that was, because I don't remember that piece. But anyway, so, so again, the bottom line for me with the movie was it taught a story that was about women being empowered, women being an authority, but not women. And even though she was a superhero and was you know knocking people out, she wasn't doing it like a tough guy. She was doing because it, it was like had to be done. It was done from a place of taking. She she basically was, um, well, as 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 the song said, just a girl. It was this thing that was so fun to watch being done. So it wasn't just a mimic of men. Oh, where women talk about a relationship with a man, that's their, that, that it's their purpose. The bed show test? I don't, I don't remember that. Okay. The past test of flying colors, that's good, I guess. <laughs> Even you'll have to talk, well, talk offline and give me more uh, clarity on what that was. Um, okay, where was I on this? It's funny, because there's so much I want to talk about the movie, but I, I promise no spoilers, because it's only just come out, and if you haven't seen the movie yet, uh, if you like Marvel, you'll love this movie. If you like women being in leadership roles, you'll like this movie. Um, but if you're like, you know, you need, oh, you forgot the exam. Okay, well, I'll, we'll, look, we'll talk about it afterwards anyway. And again, in case you're watching on YouTube, this is a Facebook Live first. So the comments you're watching, I'm responding to on the screen, you won't see. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, this is gonna be just a light broadcast. I wanna just talk about this because I just seriously watched the movie five hours ago and really found a little bit of inspiration in it, an inspirational piece about women in leadership. It was good in the sense that it was really showing the range of the feminine leadership. And also for me, it, sh it showed the heart. You know, there was a point in the movie where one of the characters says to Carol Danvers that um, it was interesting that they said, stop thinking too much, but also stay away from your emotions. So, Sorry, you didn't like the first hour, it dragged, uh, once you got off, out of the underground, it took off. Well, the thing is, it was setting the stage. The whole point with the first hour was really laying the groundwork. And yes, it was different, but I enjoyed it too because it brought some characters to the stage that we haven't seen for a while. Or I should say, we've seen characters now who, we'll see, who, who were showing up in the Marvel movies that were shot later in time. So there was a, con a, a continuity that was there, which was good. So personally, I liked it. Um, but definitely the second half was way more fun, more interactive, because they'd already built the platform. So, yes, that was true too, that she was smart, she figured things out, and that's the other thing too. There was some, definitely some um, psychological stuff in it, because the fact she had lost her memory in the first part of the movie, which is another part of the, pro part of the challenge, was she was like playing without her full faculties present because she hadn't remembered everything yet. It happened later in the movie, which is why things changed, so yes, she really did come into her own when she remembered everything and then put everything together. And that deductive reasoning was part of that process. So it was nice the fact she figured things out, but also from a place that was not, um, it, it was in some ways it was subtler, which is good. And also it was very telling about the character's ro role reversals, because there were some character role reversals, again, not to spoil anything, <laughs> that brought things forward. So for me personally, I like the movie I might see it again, I don't know. Right now, I've got some other movies on my, on my list to go see. But I had to see this movie now because there's two more coming out later in the year that are gonna be the next sequence. So, um, Endgame and and, uh, and Away From Home. Anyway, um, to, to, to distill this one down, yes, I agree with you about that. She was definitely smart as a character. She was figuring things out. Again, this thing, for me, these three women led the movie. They were the lead characters in the movie and the lead actors and the sense of what she brought 
and I, I saw an interview with Brie Larson before, is that she loved the, the depth of this character. She wasn't just a, a two-dimensional character, she had depth. And part of it was that she was not dumb, thankfully, but also she wasn't just one-dimensional. She had characterization, she had um, value in it. So, sorry, you might have something to share on YouTube. Okay, All right. sounds good. Thank you, thank you for that, Jermaine. <laughs> um, so again, if you haven't seen the movie, I do recommend it. And it did drop some great little teachings about women being empowered, being in leadership and being respected. And that was, for me, made the movie better. So that really is it. Um, no, promo, no promos, no plugs. I did do a little talk yesterday about self-love that I recommend watching if you didn't see it. Um, it, is, it is one of my focused topics nowadays. And if you haven't seen the movie yet, I recommend seeing it. If you have seen it, I welcome your comments in, the, in I welcome your thoughts in the comments below. And please, again, no spoilers for those people watching or reading. I don't want them to get um, ticked off because you said something they, hadn't, they didn't want to know about until the movie started. So again, a couple of things. Watch the end credits. There's two, one mid-credit, one post-credit scene that are additive. Um, although the last one was kind of obvious when I saw it, but that, anyway, I'm not spoiling anything. Um, but the mid-credit scene really is that little bridge from this movie to the next movie, so it's always fun to watch. So that is about it. I thank you for watching. Again, I do this broadcast every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I just was doing a light one today just because I just saw the movie today. I'll probably be deep with something tomorrow. We'll see what that is. That'll be, that'll be number 650, so that might be a little bit more impactful. We'll see. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, let me know. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, so it goes on my personal page where it goes out at 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch me live tomorrow. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And then in there, there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch my broadcasts. So thank you, Evie, for your input, by the way. I'm glad you liked it as well. And uh, that's it. So recommendations, two thumbs up. Definitely um, a added, uh, definitely a positive addition to the Marvel Universe. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow for more fun and games. And uh, take care of yourselves. Bye.